the St. Thomas the Apostle Parish, Church of St. Teresa of Lisieux. Today, we remember Sam, but we are going to celebrate her life and all the vitality and joy that she brought us. We can do that through our participation in the Mass by praying the prayers, singing the songs. As that last song said, yes, silence and sorrow. We are in sorrow and grief today. But we will not make this a completely sad occasion. We will celebrate the life of a beautiful human being that is now in a better place. I um, ask you at this time to please turn off your cell phones, mute them or silence them so there's no unnecessary distractions. And um, we're going to begin momentarily with our entrance hymn, which is Be Not Afraid.
My sisters and brothers, good morning. Together with Samantha's parents, Nanita and, uh, and Carl, and her whole family. Together with Father Dan Sweeney, who is pastor here at St. Thomas the Apostle Parish. Together with Father Adam Potter, who's the chaplain at Sarah Catholic. On behalf of the entire family community of Sarah Catholic High School, and in my own name, I welcome you all here to this place of consolation today. I dare say that uh, if we could be any place else but here today, we would be glad to be so. If we could turn back the hands of time from last Wednesday, we would do so. But reality being what it is, we need to be here because we have a God who embraces us with a consolation that uh, defies words. And it's within the, our own experience of the resurrection of Jesus that we come here today to lift Samantha back up to God who gave her to us in the first place. Every time that we come together to celebrate the Mass, we do two things. We give thanks and praise to God and we pray for each other. And so we give thanks to God for the many, many, many blessings that God has given to us through Samantha, the ways in which she's touched our hearts and our own personal journeys. And we pray especially not only for her, but for her mom and dad and for all of us that in the midst of this great tragedy, we can be a people of hope, keeping our eyes focused on where Samantha now is and where we hope to be in God's kingdom in heaven. And with those precious thoughts in mind, I invite you now to join with me as we praise our God in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. In the waters of baptism, Samantha died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May she now share with him eternal glory. Fifteen years ago, on the day of her baptism, Samantha's mom and dad brought her to church and she was clothed with the baptismal robe that was symbolic of her own family. We now place on her casket now the white pall, symbolic of her baptismal robe, but especially a sign of the many, many, many ways in which she showed herself to be a true disciple of the Lord Jesus. Let us pray. Lord God, source and destiny of our lives, in your loving providence, you gave us Samantha to grow in wisdom, age, and grace. Now you have called her to yourself. As we grieve the loss of someone so young, we seek to understand your purpose. Draw Samantha to yourself. Give her full stature in Christ. May she stand with all the angels and saints who know your love and praise your saving will. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed in the view of the foolish to be dead, and their passing away was thought an affliction. And their going forth from us utter destruction, but they are in peace. For if before men, indeed, they be punished, yet is their hope full of immortality. Chastised a little, they shall be greatly blessed, because God has tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace, he proved them, and as the sacrificial offerings, he took them to himself. In the time of their visitation, they shall shine, and they shall dart about as sparks through stubble. They shall judge nations and rule over peoples, and the Lord shall be their king forever. Those who trust in him shall understand truth, and the grateful shall abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are with his holy ones, and his care is with his elect. The word of the Lord.
reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came, a, came through a man, the resurrection of the dead also through a man. For just as in Adam all die, so too in Christ shall all be brought to life, but each one in proper order. Christ, the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. The word of the Lord. According to John. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We have come together this morning as family members, friends, school students, neighbors, parishioners, to pay our final respects to Sam and to ask God to welcome her into his presence. In a special way, we pray that the Lord be with all of you as we deal with this very tragic loss 
before we realize when there's any type of sickness or sudden death that occurs in our families. It causes us to stop and to think and to reflect. We stop and think about good times we had together. We stop and think about problems and sorrows that were shared together. We stop and think about things maybe we would have liked to have said or done that we no longer have the opportunity to say or do now. And we raise questions. Like, why do people have to die? Why does it happen when it happens and how it happens? It seems like with death, there's so many questions and so few answers to those questions. Even the gospel begins by saying to us today, do not let your hearts be troubled. Again, we ask ourselves, is God that harsh, that cruel? He doesn't expect family, friends, to grieve over the loss of someone they love very much. Someone that no one can replace. No, it's natural to have feelings of sadness and sorrow down deep inside of us. Because when somebody dear to us dies, we feel like part of us dies along with them. We realize that there's a void that's created in our life. A void that no one else can fill and one that doesn't go away, and we have to learn to live with. And yet we also realize that none of us belongs to ourselves, that we all belong to God. And there's that longing inside each and every one of us to return back where we came from. And so today, we have to deal with mixed feelings. Feelings of sadness and sorrow because we're left here behind to pick up the pieces, and put our lives back together again and continue living them the best that we can. And happiness and joy, not for ourselves, but for Sam. Because we realize that she dwells in God's presence where there's no sickness, no suffering, no pain, no death. There's life, peace, and happiness and joy. And we have to be happy for her and we have to let go. And yet still we ask ourselves, why? Why does it happen? And God answers those questions for us. For God, who loved his own son so much, allowed his own son to enter into this world and to suffer and to die. And if God allowed that to happen to him, why should any of us be any different? We all are in this world, and we all have our share of crosses in life to bear, some more than others. And we all eventually die. But again, our Lord Jesus Christ, our faith, the gospel today tells us it doesn't end there. It begins there. That our Lord has gone on ahead of us to prepare a place for us, and that he will come back to take us with him. So to where he is, we also may be. And so this past week, in a very sudden way, the Lord came to Sam and said to her, A job well done, my faithful servant. I ask nothing more from you in this life. You shared your faith, your life, your love with your family and your friends. Your mission's complete. Your dwelling place is now ready. Come now and share in the fullness of my life. And God called her home to peace. And so today we gather and we pray that God welcome her to his table in heaven. And each of us in a special way can offer a prayer of thanksgiving for allowing God to have shared it with us, realizing that she lives on in us by the things that she said and the things that she did. It's those fond memories that keep her a part of our life and that keep us going as well. I'm sure every one of us in the church this morning has many memories of how Sam has touched our life. And I stop and I think for the years that I have known her from the days of St. Agnes School to St. Therese School to Sarah Catholic High School 
being a part of my life, I can't even begin to imagine how any of you feel, because I know how I feel. But I do know and I do believe in the grace of God. And I know that Sam believes in the grace of God. Because she lived her life that way. It's interesting because if you listen to the gospel today, the gospel said, when Thomas said, Lord, don't, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? I could hear Sam saying to Thomas, you dummy. You know the way. I know the way. If I know the way, you should know the way. She knew the way. She lived her life as she knew the way to God. You know, as I stop and I think of her, and you know, there's a program that I like to watch in the mornings when I get an opportunity. It's on Cozy TV, and it's called Touched by an Angel. It stars Michael Landon. And you know, this morning as I was getting ready and I had that program on, and it made me again stop and think of Sam as that angel who in human form was here on this earth touching the lives of people, bringing them closer to God by what she did, by what she said, and how she supported them. I can honestly say that I really don't know a younger person who lived her faith to the nth degree. You know, when I was at the house a few days ago, when this all happened, and I was sitting in a room, and I don't know what the room was called. I asked Anita, she says it's called coming down a steps room. But there were two plaques hanging on the wall that caught my attention with pictures in them. And I looked at those and I thought to myself, how wonderful, because those two pictures said, there is a time for everything. And there is a time for everything. And I looked at those pictures of everything that was there. And the other picture frame said, live for each moment. And when I was in the house that day, despite how everybody else felt and what was going on, I was fixated on those two picture frames thinking to myself, wow, this family's got it. They're reminded every day of what it means to live for the moment. And that's exactly what Sam did. She lived for the moment. I know when we were on the football field for the prayer service, and one of the cheerleaders got up and spoke and said, Sam would laugh at everything, even if it wasn't funny, she'd laugh. But by the time she was done, we were all laughing. You know, God doesn't ask any of us to do anything great in life. He asks us to be who we are. And that's what Sam did. She lived her life as who she was. She lived her life each day. And you know the nice thing about it was? It came natural. It was a natural way of life for her and her family. They didn't have to work at it. They already knew what a blessing they had with the relationship with the Lord. I remember talking to Carl that day at the funeral home. 
And I remember Carl saying to me, because Carl just came into the church this past Easter season, right here in this same church, with the same Paschal candle, that now is the light of Christ for Sam to heaven, which was the light of Christ for Carl to come into the church. And you know what he said to me? One of my greatest regrets is, Father, I should have done this years ago. And I said, you know what, Carl? Doesn't matter. You made up for lost time because you were a star pupil in the RCIA class. There was no one more excited than you and more wanting to know about the faith. And as I was in the funeral home listening to both of you, I know you're going to be okay. Because we all have somebody's a little closer to God. And Carl said to me, you know what? Sam's looking down right now at us and said, what is all the fuss about? I'm in a better place and I'm happy. I'm okay. I want you to be okay. That's the kind of family they are. How wonderful that is. And Sam was such a well-rounded girl. She was an altar server. She was a member of the youth group. She went to Appalachia. Some of the greatest pictures that I saw were yesterday at the funeral home as I was watching her and her friends all in Disney World with Winnie the Pooh and all that. I hate that dumb bear, but they had their picture taken. <laughs> but there they were, smiling and having the time of their life. And probably one of the hardest pictures that we saw last Tuesday, or Wednesday, I should say, when we had the sign-up for Appalachia for St. Thomas the Apostle, within the first 15 slides, whose smiling face is there like this? None other than Sam's. And 10 more times, that picture of her, whether how hot it was or whatever, she had that Cheshire cat smile on her like she knew something that nobody else knew. And maybe she did. Maybe she knew that she was an angel here on earth. Just as the Lord knew that his time was going to be very limited. But the Lord had a great impact. And so did Sam have an impact on all of us. I'm sure, I know for certain, your hearts are heavy. We're human. It's natural. Some of us may be even mad at God, asking why. I wish I could stand up here and give you an answer why. I can't. Other than the fact that I know God is a big boy, and that he will take care of himself, and he will take care of us as well, as he continues to do. And I think the most important thing that we need to do is to celebrate Sam's life. We truly are an Easter people. We are an Alleluia people. We are a people of life. No matter whether we're 15 years of age on this face of the earth or we live to be 110 on the face of the earth, that is nothing compared to eternity in the presence of God because that's where we belong. That's our heavenly home. And so we realize that it now becomes our task and our job and our responsibility to continue to live our lives to the fullest, 
sharing our faith, our life with one another, doing the best job that we can so that when our hour does come, the Lord may look at us and say to us as he did to Sam, a job well done, my faithful servant. Come and share in the fullness of my kingdom. And just remember, folks, every time you put a smile on someone's face, that's what Sam wants you to do. Do it for her. Do it for her. Just not today. Just not this week. She's touched all of our lives. Remember her. And always when you smile, think of Sam. And that's the greatest gift that you could give to her now. Because that's what she wanted to do in life. And that's what she did with her life for each of us. May God bless you. There is never a millisecond in life uh, when our God is not listening to us. And so now we uh, lift up to him the prayers that are spoken by our lips and also those prayers that are embraced within our hearts. In baptism, Samantha received the light of Christ. Scatter the darkness now and lead her over the waters of death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Samantha was nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome her into the halls of the heavenly banquet. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The family and friends of Samantha seek comfort and consolation. Heal their pain and dispel the darkness and doubt that comes from grief. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have fallen asleep, especially Samantha, and with the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear us. Lord, heal us. Lord, help us. Lord, hear our every prayer. Lord, heal our every wound. Lord, help our every need. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for all As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Sam, we beseech your mercy that you do not doubt your son to be a loving Savior, may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the salvation of the world, the life of the human race, the resurrection of the dead. Through him the hosts of angels adored your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one course exalted praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all that you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things, you make them holy. You never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from rising the sun to its setting, pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you. By the same Spirit, grace make holy these gifts we brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these <coughs> mysteries. For on the night he is betrayed, he himself took bread and gave you thanks. He said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he said the blessing. Gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you with thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death, you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, 
are filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Thomas, St. Therese, St. Agnes, St. Francis of Assisi, <coughs> St. Junipero Serra, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our rec reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and David our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Samantha, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who is united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body to our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all ages and praise you without end, through Christ our Lord, from whom you bestow on the world all that is good. <clears throat> Through him and with him and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
of God. <coughs> Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord. Please join us in our communion song, We Remember.
backing up the dreams God planted in the fertile soil of you. I can't believe the hopes he's granted for a chapter in your life is through. But we'll keep you close as always. It won't even seem you've gone. Cause our hearts in big and small ways will keep the love that keeps us strong and friends are friends forever if the lord's a lord of them and the friend will not say never cause the welcome will not end though it's hard to let you go in the father's hands we know that a lifetime's not too long to live as friends. With the faith and love God's given, springing from the hope we know, we will pray the joy you will live in is the strength that now you know but we'll keep you close as always it won't even seem you're gone cause our hearts in big and small ways We'll keep the love that keeps us strong. And friends are friends forever, if the Lord's a Lord of them. And the friend will not say never, cause the welcome will not end. Though it's hard to let you go, in the Father's hands we know that a lifetime's not too long to live as friends. No, a lifetime's not too long to live as friends. Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that strengthened by it, our sister Samantha may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. So one of the most uh, beautiful symbols at a Catholic funeral mass is the blessing of our beloved with incense. And as you and I uh, experience the smoke rising up to the heavens with its sweet fragrance, 
Let it be an invitation for all of us uh, to lift up our dear Sam to heaven, to give her back to God who gave her to us. And I dare say that in response to Father Dan's beautiful homily as we do so, let's make sure that there is uh, a smile on our faces, but especially a smile in our hearts. Before we go our separate ways and take leave of our dear Samantha, we express our farewell to her and our, and, and our affection for her. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope, for one day we shall joyfully greet her again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Receive her soul and present her to God. <coughs> present this soul to God most high. Receive her soul and present her to God. Present this soul to God most high. Saints of God, come to her aid. Come to meet her, angels of the Lord. Receive her soul and present her to God. Present this soul to God most high. May Christ, who called you, take you home. May angels lead you to our Father's side. Receive her soul and present her to God. Present this soul to God most high. Give eternal rest, O Lord, and may your light shine on her forever. Receive her soul and present her to God. Present this soul to God most high. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our dear sister Samantha in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Samantha in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with all the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us, listen to our prayers, open the gates of paradise to your servant, and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our sister forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Samantha. May the angels lead you to paradise. May the martyrs go out and meet and take you to the holy city, the new Jerusalem. I am the resurrection. I am the life. Whoever believes in
let us now take our sister to her place of final rest. <laughs> 